Hello, crewmates. Hello. Ah, Emmanuel. You know who I am, don't you? <laughs> well, you've all seen me before, haven't you? <laughs> Not so long ago, either. <laughs> uh, well, I'm so easily recognised, you know. Do you know, I was doing a, a summer show at Eastbourne a couple of years ago, and staying in a hotel. Uh, this is true, this is not an anecdote, it's, this is the absolute truth. And I got in the lift one day in this hotel, and a fellow got in, and he looked at me, and he said, Arthur. I said, yes. He said, I bet everyone calls you that, don't they? <laughs> I said, yes. He said, well, yeah, I like him, you know. <laughs> I said, I know, I've been told that before. He said, mind you, he's getting on a bit now. He must be 70. I said, I think he's more than that. He said, is he? He wears well, doesn't he? <laughs> and anyway, he got out the lift, and that was that. Now, the following day, this is quite true, I assure you. Following day, the same thing happened. He got in the lift again. He looked at me and he said, Arthur. Well, I thought he knows who I am now. He said, here. I hear he was in the hotel yesterday. A pity we missed him, isn't it? <laughs> so... Uh, when the lift hit the ground floor, I couldn't resist it. I said, well, as a matter of fact, playmate, I am Arthur Askey. He said, oh, I bet you wish you were. <laughs> Isn't that marvellous? That's a true story. So, I was born in a basket of dirty tights <laughs> at a broken-down theatre in Crewe. My dad was a red-nosed comedian. My mother was Danny LaRue. <laughs> <laughs> Now, as a matter of fact, Claymates, I was born in the year 1900 when good Queen Victoria was on the throne. <laughs> and the following year she died, poor old girl, and her son, Edward VII, he took over, you see, and uh, he was called Edward the Peacemaker. And the peace he made was called Lily Langtry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, actually, I was born in, do you know I was born in the Holy Land? Did you know that? Well, no, actually, I was born in Liverpool, and in the south end of Liverpool, there's a little cluster of streets in the dock area, and they're called Moses Street, Isaac Street, Jacob Street, and David Street. Now, all my young life centred around the church, and Michael's in the Hamlet Church. I was a choir boy. Don't I look angelic, don't you think? Yeah. But I've often been asked through the years, why so much talent, if I can use the phrase, came from Liverpool. You look back, my golly, there's a lot of names came from Liverpool. I only ever, ever went to the theatre once a year, and that was to the pantomime. But we used to have our own fun. We all used to congregate round, you know, and uh, they'd all come to our house. My mother would put a fire in the parlour, and all my mates would recite and tell jokes, and one would play the violin, somebody would play the piano, somebody would sing, and we used to make our own fun. And I think that is exactly how it all started. Me, I did the lot, told jokes, sang, played the piano. I, uh, perhaps some of you have heard me doing my bit of the piano, have you? Yeah. You have? Well, I'll tell you what I usually do, you see. I, um, I say I'm going to play Rachmaninoff's Prelude in C-sharp minor. That's what I say. And I go to the piano, do a lot of follow, you know, round here and a lot, lot of this. Thing. <laughs> Rachmaninoff Prelude in C sharp minor. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> anyway, here it is, Rachmaninoff Prelude now by Tchaikovsky. I hope you enjoy it. Well, it gets a bit tricky after that, you know. <laughs> Is it interesting, this? Because we can put the lantern slides on if you don't like But anyway. Uh, when I was a kid, we always went to Rill for our holidays, and there was a Piero troupe on the sands there called the Jovial Jesters. Next slide, please. 
There we are. There they are on that little pavilion there, you see. I used to do that about, oh, 19, 8, 9, 10, and so on. And they fascinated. They showed three times a day, 11, 3, and 7, if wet in the town hall. True. And my father used to give me threepence, and he knew I was all right for the day, because it was a penny a time to sit on the sands right up at the front of the stage and see the jovial gestures. And I used to love it, you know. I knew all their songs, all their jokes, I'm still cracking a few of them. <laughs> and all their sketches. And I did learn a hell of a lot from them, I'll tell you that. Anyway, this is 1916 we're getting to now. And 1916, I left school, and my father found me a job. I tried for everything they had in Liverpool, because Liverpool then was cotton and shipping. The slave trade had just finished. <laughs> and, and insurance and banks. But my father landed me a job with the Liverpool Corporation in the municipal, you see, in the education offices. And I was in the tonsils and adenoids department. <laughs> see, 1918, I find that I'm being called up for the army because I'm 18 years of age, you see. And I thought, oh, that's silly. They won't take me my size with bad eyesight. <laughs> so I went along to have a medical. <laughs> and they said, take your clothes off. I did. They had a good laugh. <laughs> That's me as a soldier. They gave me, <laughs> gave me a uniform and posted me off to North Wales to uh, Kinmel Camp. <laughs> Happy days, eh? <laughs> anyway, I was at Kinmel Camp for about a month and then I was posted to the Far East. Great Yarmouth. <laughs> I was there for a few weeks and the Kaiser got wind that I joined the army and he threw the towel in. <laughs> so the war finished and now I'm back in the education offices in Liverpool and I'm doing Tonsons and Adenoids again. <laughs> Isn't that marvellous? So once again, the page of history turns. <laughs> now you need an applause there. This is going to happen a lot, you see. That's if you're silly when I've finished. But um, anyway, as I say, I went back to the office and I formed a little concert party called the Filberts. We were dressed as Pierrot, you see. And we used to do all charity shows for hospitals and, and uh, old folks and... Uh, uh, even church concerts, any, any, anyone who'd listen to us, you know. And uh, we, we, we were performing once in, in, in a place, and a fellow came round to see me, and he said, have you ever thought of going on the stage? I thought, well, I've thought about it. I've never done anything about it. Why? He said, well, I think you've got something. He didn't say what it was, but he thought <laughs> I had something. So, uh, oh, I said, I'll have to speak to my people at home because I'm in a job with a pension at the end of it, you know. He said, well, if ever you feel, he said, I can now put you in touch with a concert party who are looking for a comedian. They're in London, and they'll take my word for it. I think you're pretty good. So off I went to London, and I was met at uh, Euston, you see. They booked digs for me when I arrived at Euston. Now, it was my first time in theatrical digs. Now, you know, there's millions of stories told about theatrical digs. I could keep you here all night telling them. But I think the best one I ever heard was by Bobby Howes. You remember Bobby Howes? Well, he used to do a, 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 an act with two fellows, Claude Halbert and Paul England. They called themselves Those Three Chaps. And they were at Wolverhampton playing a week at the theatre there. And they went to the digs. The landlady uh, greeted them. And she seemed very nice. They did their show at night. And when they got home, they took home with them a bottle of sherry. And they put it in the sideboard. And the following day, they went out and played golf. And they had a few gins at lunchtime. And when they got home, they sat down to the lunch. said, oh, come on, let's have a sherry. Pull the bottle out. It had been opened. And it had gone down quite a bit, you see. And they were livid. Bobby was particularly livid. So do you know what he did? He tinkled in it. <laughs> <laughs> and he brought it up to the top again, you see. <laughs> put the cork back, put it back in the, in, in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Following day, same thing. Came back from God. Let's have a look. <laughs> She's been at it again. <laughs> <laughs> and this went on all the week, you see. Well, it came Sunday, and now they're leaving to go to the next place. And the landlady said, well, I hope you've been very happy with me. And they said, oh, yes, we have. And if you come here again, we hope you'll stay with me. She said, they said, yes, yes. The only thing is, next time, we won't bother bringing in a, a, a bottle of sherry. She said, why not? So Bobby said, you know why not, because... 
Oh, she said, don't you remember when you arrived on Monday, you told me you were fond of trifle. I've been putting it in the trifle. <laughs> Anyway, uh, at this time, now I've joined some salad and I'm at Colchester. I've forgotten Sister Susie's song, Shows for Soldiers, and I've got some new songs. They're not my own, they're published, but I'll sing you one that used to go down very well, and it's called Bumpity Bump. Okay. I got an invitation to the church last Sunday morning. The wedding that took place made me laugh all over my face. Charlie Brown was being spliced to Emily McClegg And strange to say most everyone there had a wooden leg And Charlie Brown walked up the aisle Bumpity bump, bumpity bump The bride she came in with a smile Bumpity bump, bumpity bump The bridesmaid Eva Dunn Had a dot and carry one And the parson strange to tell Had a bumpity bump as well The bride mama walked up the aisle Bumpity bump Bumpity bump and laughing, bumping it so merrily. As they take the wedding bow, they walk out to sip the cow with a bumpity bump, the one like it down the Well, after that, I now get another job in a resident concert party. That's better than the touring, you know, at £12 a week. And that was at Margate, on the Oval, on the bandstand. Next slide, please. There you are. See me on the end there? Can you see me? Just about, can you? Ah, that is me. Well, anyway, the governor of this concert party, his name was Fred Wilden. He was a wonderful fella, and he was on percentage with the corporation, you see. In other words, being in the open air, if it rained, we didn't show, and he got no money, but had to pay us. And one particular year, June and July were shocking. It rained every day. We'd just get ready to show, and down would come the rain. So poor old Fred was having a very grim time of it. In came August, and it was wonderful. A beautiful August, so now everything's going well. And I remember one afternoon, Fred had been playing golf in the morning, and he'd had a few gins at lunchtime, because everything was going so well. And he was sitting on the end, at the seaside end of the of the bandstand with the sun shining on him. After the opening chorus, he fell fast asleep. <laughs> and the soprano, a girl called Lillian Myers, came forward and uh, she sang, beautiful voice she had, got a lot of applause, and then she announced her encore. And she said, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now, April is a lady. And old Fred said, July was a bit of a bugger. <laughs> Well, of course, at that time, I changed again. Now, I'd got some songs of my own. I'm going to sing you one now that's been with me for a very long time, since 1933. I bet a lot of you could sing it with me. Here it goes. Off you go, then. <laughs> What a glorious thing to be And the grown-up busy busy bee Whiling away the passing hours Pinching all the pollen from the gallery stars I'd like to be a busy busy bee Being just as busy as a bee can be Flying round the garden the streets never seen Taking back the honey to the dear old queen Buzz 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 honey bee honey bee Buzz if you like the door sting me Buzz 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 honey bee honey bee Buzz if you like the door sting me Oh what a glorious thing to be a healthy grown up busy busy bee Making hay while time is right Building up the honeycomb just like tripe I'd like to be a busy busy bee Being just busy as a bee can be Flying all around the wild hedgerow Stinging all the cows upon the parson's nose Buzz 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 honey bee honey Buzz if you like but don't sing me Buzz 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 Oh god <laughs> Silly bee song isn't it? Oh what a glorious thing to be a healthy bee there you go. Okay. Lovely. Lovely. Well, you remember that? I used to sing five verses of that. I sang two now and I'm out of breath. <laughs>